just the mention of the name, the Red House, and the image of the magnificent red building located within the capital city of Port of Spain comes to mind. It covers an entire block from Hart Street to Knox Street and sits perfectly between Abercrombie and St. Vincent Streets. The Red House is the seat of this country's democracy and was once used to host parliamentary proceedings. Its history date back to the 1800s when the first building was constructed and painted red to celebrate the Diamond Jubilee of Queen Victoria. As a result of its color, citizens coined the phrase the Red House to describe the building, a label that has lasted to this day. Following the water riots in 1903, which resulted in the first building being gutted by fire, the Red House was rebuilt and opened to the public in 1907. Since then, the building has hosted a variety of government functions and many historic events, particularly the official ceremony that marked this country's first day of independence on August 31st, 1962. Over the years, the structure of the Red House weakened and restorative works commenced at the site. Prior to this, however, it became necessary to excavate several inspection units at various locations throughout the Red House. This was done in order to provide for structural reinforcement inspection works for the seismic retrofitting of the building. In March 2013, during excavation works, human skeletal and biological remains, bone fragments, mollusks and pre-colonial cultural material were found in the basement of the Red House. Archaeologists were brought in to conduct excavation and post-excavation analyses at the site. The late Mr. Peter Harris led the archaeological team during the early stages of the excavation process. However, due to his demise, Dr. Basil Reed, senior lecturer in archaeology at the University of the West Indies, was brought on board to lead the archaeological team and continue excavation works on July 1, 2013. During the removal exercise, six complete skeletons, 36 incomplete skeletons, three sets of long bones and one skull in a pot were discovered. Several coins were also unearthed, of which the most valuable is a $1 US gold luster coin. Samples of the unearthed material were sent abroad for DNA testing and radiocarbon dating in order to determine the ethnicity, gender and age of the bones. Two particular samples of shells belonging to the group of pre-colonial material discovered at the Red House were sent abroad to be dated. Tests reveal they were from the periods 5510 to 5330 BC and 4330 to 4130 BC. Over 13,000 individual fragments of European ceramics were discovered, as well as Adornos and colonial period ceramics. Artifacts and various Amerindian pottery were discovered throughout the Red House basement, along with shells and fragments of animal bones belonging to eight species of animals. Numerous stone artifacts and pottery found buried with at least nine of the skeletons suggest that they were directly linked to the interment process. It is also believed that landfill from the Laventil Quarry was used to fill the area before the first building was constructed. To date, Approximately 2,260 cubic meters of soil has been excavated since work began at the site in July 2013. Although excavation works were completed in September 2014, all skeletal testing should be completed by mid-January 2015. An agreement signed by the Office of the Parliament and the University of Central Florida has facilitated a visit by Dr. John Schultz, a forensic anthropologist and his assistant, who will examine and conduct tests on the skeletons and bones during that period. Dialogue has been ongoing between the Red House Historical Cultural Heritage Team, a cabinet-appointed committee, and representatives of the three First Peoples groups to determine the ideal location to house the cultural remains. The committee has agreed in principle that all the remains of the First Peoples should be interned on the grounds of the Red House with an appropriate sign indicating the significance of the area. In the interim, the First Peoples have been allowed to hold religious ceremonies on the Red House grounds. The archaeological team will continue work beyond the retrieval phase for the purpose of completing the processing and collating of the finds.
An academic publication detailing the restorative and excavation works will be compiled and published, and all information gathered will be forwarded to the Archaeological Subcommittee of the National Trust of Trinidad and Tobago. The Red House is and continues to be an iconic building situated within the nation's capital. These recent findings can only add to the remarkable significance of the building and may answer questions about our country's former inhabitants who called our island their home centuries ago.